With in-depth cases coming from neighboring states, the Nigerian Governor's Forum has ordered an interstate lockdown. But on the flip side, the Nigerian Labour Congress has asked the federal government not to extend the lockdown. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. With increased numbers of confirmed cases and Nigeria records 873 cases of COVID-19 and 28 deaths, the Nigerian Governor's Forum has called for the decentralization of the activities of the COVID-19 response from federal to local government and also an interstate lockdown for two weeks in order to curtail further spread of the pandemic. Now, the chairman of the forum, Governor Kaude Faiyemi of Ikiti State, said the decisions would help reduce the spread of the virus across communities and from state to state. He also added that only essential services will be permitted to be transported across the state boundaries. And joining us to have a conversation around this this evening is legal practitioner via phone, Belumi Olag Jagbensi. Thank you, Mr. Belumi, for joining us on Plus Politics. Yeah, thank you very much. Good evening, and how Good are you evening, doing? Plus. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for joining us. The Nigerian Governor's Forum has called for the decentralization. Yeah, good evening. I'm doing very fine. Good to know. Now, the Nigerian government has called, um, the Nigerian Governor's Forum, I beg your pardon, has called for the decentralization of the activities of the COVID-19 response from federal to local government to curtail for the spread of the pandemic. Now, how do you think this is going to pan out? Is, it, is this call right at this point in time? Yeah, um, sincerely, I think it's a very useful call because if we must actually combat the COVID-19 crisis, there's a need for us to have an holistic approach towards it. And there's no way we can achieve this by sitting in Abuja or sitting in all of the state capital to do all of this. I think it is essential that um, the federal government should decentralize the machinery towards addressing all of those problems. For example, I think it is important that in every local government in the 77, 774 local government in the country, there should be testing centers where people can be tested to know if they are positive or negative. Because the major challenge uh, in the fight of COVID-19 is the fact that the federal government or government at all levels are not doing enough testing, and so we cannot verify the extent or the degree of, I mean, the spread of the virus. And for us to be able to bend the curve quickly, there's a need for us to expand this tentacle. So I believe strongly that the call of the state government uh, across board that to decentralize the course and the fight against, I mean, the pandemic is essential. Mr. Penlumi, do stay with us. We'll go for a live break now. And when we return, we'll have more questions for you. Please stay with us. This is Plus Politics, and thank you for staying with us. And still, we have our phone online with us, legal practitioner, Belumi Olajek Messi. Thank you for staying with us, Belumi. And during the break, joining us live in the studio is political analyst, Mr. Francis Chilaka. Good to see you, Mr. Francis. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. How are you staying safe? Doing everything possible. Great. <laughs> now, the Nigerian Governors Forum has called for the decentralization of um, how the federal government should go about handling the COVID-19 issue. I want to ask you, do you think this call is little too late? Well, we always do things late in this country, but I think it is late, but then it's, late, and, you know, it's better late than never. Uh, if you look at the figures, you know, as announced last night, we all have cause to be afraid yes. that um, um, it's going to get out of hand. We get out of hand in the sense that we do not even have the health system or structure on ground with which to uh, be able to avert any kind of um, uh, epidemic. Yes. You know, so I think it's a good call, uh, but I think it's coming late, but then it's, 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 it's in the right direction. Now, the, the, the transfer of authority from the central to local government, how effective, because I'm concerned about the efficacy and the effectiveness of um, how this will play out in, in curtailing and forestalling the, the spread of the virus, because already um, there's a scale of community spread, and our, our borders, our interstates have been open all this while. You know, the problem we've always had in Nigeria is we failed to recognize the importance of the thought, um, which is the local government, in terms of governance. We're always looking at the executive, and we forget that, you know, 
it is the local government that is closer to the people. And so I think that it is time. Maybe, maybe COVID-19 will help us to, to help, you know, give more autonomy to the local government because they know these people and the people relate more at the local level than at the state and national level. Now, Mr. Kalumi, should this have been a better way to uh, approach this pandemic from the get-go? Hello? Yes. Should this have been a better way to have approached this pandemic from the get-go? Yeah, please, can you take that question again? I'm asking, with the decentralization from the federal to the local government, do you think this would have been a better way? The, the yeah, approach would have been better with, from, um, from the get-go? Yeah, I agree absolutely with the demands of the governors across the third states that there's a need for us to decentralize the process of fighting the pandemic. I think it's very essential. And I think it is what we need to do to achieve the fight. But you see, beyond decentralizing this fight, one thing the country must understand right now is that the Nigerian nation is going through the most difficult um, um, trial of its history. And you see, this fight has actually exposed the fact that our nation has not been prepared in the past as a formidable country to address any problem that it encounters suddenly. So I think strongly that it should be decentralized. However, even in the course of decentralizing it, apart from um, issues that have to do with testing, issues that have to do with um, quarantine people and all of that, we should also understand that anything we are doing must fall within the confines of our law. For example, um, it was widely reported yesterday that the governors agreed that um, there should be an interstate lockdown. That is not within the powers of our governors. Our governors do not have the power in anywhere to block or to lock any state against any other state. Because these and uh, the issues that borders on borders is an exclusive thing for the federal government. And even the federal government cannot take such a unilateral decision without the import of the legislative arm of government. And so that's why you see that even though we are trying to fight this, um, this um, pandemic, we are not fighting it in line with law. However, because of exigencies and, and the necessity that it requires, I think sufficiently that there must be understanding amongst all tiers of government to ensure that all of these things are addressed very well. As much as many Nigerians will agree at this point for the decentralization for um, the activities of the COVID-19 response from the federal government, let's contemplate for a moment the efficacy and effectiveness of the idea as the, 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 as the best chance of nipping the spread of the virus in communities. But let me, I'll take you first and then I'll come to Mr. Chilaka, Chilaka in the live studio. Because effectiveness and the efficacy of, of this um, process now, it, it's what we should be considering beyond what the, um, the governor's forum are coming together to, to, to suggest. I, I, I wouldn't know, I, I can't get this question clearly because it's echoing. Okay, Mr. Mr. Chilaka, you want to respond to that? Maybe hopefully you can pick up from that. Well, um, talking about the spread, which has become a community transmission yes. now, um, going through the local government, uh, like I said earlier, is actually the best thing to do right now. Um, because, um, you, know, you know Nigerians, we, we attach stigmatization to everything. And so it's going to be easier at the local government level to remove the stigma. You know, people need to understand that this thing is not as a result of, people have started saying it's a result of sin, it's a result of evil, it's a result. No, it's something that anybody can get. So at the local government level, you will find out that people will be free because don't forget that the local, level, local government, they'll be speaking their language, the language that the people understand. And that is what we need. We need to speak a language that the people understand. That is the only way to communicate with this people. Yeah, but I'm looking at a case where the, the, the numbers are increasing and... Um, people, have, people have traveled interstate. And now okay, you, you're asking for initial one, a shutdown of our interstate borders. Um, that contact tracing is still an issue for us. And so what's the likelihood this will mitigate the, the, the effect of the spread of, of, this, of this virus, given the fact that we have increasing numbers every day? Well, the thing is, you, if you leave the borders open, obviously people will be moving in and out. Yeah. I mean, and you know that somebody who has it from Lagos maybe going to Oweri, he stops at Ore, he stops at Onicha. He's giving it out to people. So, but if the borders are closed, it means that if you have it in Lagos, you stay put in, Lagos. in Lagos. And we said, and, and it's said that it's for 14 days. You know, it's after 14 days that you know whether you're free or not. So I think it's the right thing to do right now. You know, let us stop all this 
you know, going back and forth and saying, oh, should we do this? Should we? That's, what, that's what has led to 800 and something that we have right now. So I think that closing the borders, closing the entire system for two weeks, but there's also a but there. You don't close the system without making sure that the people would survive. Because if you close the system and the people have no way of surviving, coronavirus will say, stay in the house. Hunger will say, come out. And then you have a conflict. And that's where there's going to be a problem. So whatever the government wants to do right now, the government should think as if there's no box. And so, okay, good. How do we send palliatives to people? How do we get across to people? How do we ensure that those who are asking to stay at home have something to eat? Because if you have a man that you have three, four children, you don't have food to eat, the tendency is that you will come out to look for food. Mr. Kwelumi, are you there? Can you hear me? Mr. Kwelumi, are you there? Yeah, I can hear you very clearly. Also, the Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Ehaniwe, at doing a meeting of the Prime yeah, Minister. Yeah, I'm here. I can hear you very clearly. Oh, great. Clear. Yes. So I'm saying that the Minister of Health, Osage Ehaniwe, had doing a meeting of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 on Wednesday, raised concerns over the community spread of the AMED and called for an active response towards empowering the primary healthcare sector in the country. At this point, wouldn't it be right to have a collaborative effort between the private health sector and the NCDC just to afford Nigerians enough testing and treatment centers under the strict supervision of the NCDC in both the administrative and technical procedures? Pelumi, can you hear me? Yeah, it is very crucial that um, there's a need for partnership between the... All right, we seem to be having Between a problem with, with our network with Pelumi there, so I'm essentially like, we'll just, we'll just direct um, this to you now. We, we have some private this hospitals being listed. I mean, isn't it time we see a collabor collaborative effort between the private sector and the NCDC for more testing centers and treatment centers than, than listing some of those hospitals right now as, as, um, as illegal places to go to for, for the testing and treatment of COVID-19? Well, we need to understand why they were listed, or why they have been delisted yeah. to start with. It's because um, they were clandestinely attending to patients. And that's, where the, and that's where the problem really lies, you know. They were clandestinely doing that. But I think that it is high time that the federal government, the state government, the NCDC, and private hospitals come together and say, how do we fight this thing? It has to go beyond one person. It has to go beyond the ministry. It has to go beyond the state government. Right now, it is even beyond everybody. So it is high time for everybody to get involved. And I think that it's going to be a right thing if government does that immediately. Now, we, we had, we had um, a, member, a member of the NMA with us some, some time ago during the weekend. He did say the reason why they can't have private institutions as testing and treatment centers because there are administrative and technical procedures involved. Now, I was of the opinion, if we can have NDC be the, the center of control and put whatever measures need to be put in place for any center that will be controlled, because we don't have enough testing um, um, facility as it is right now. And so instead of listing some of these hospitals as illegal for the testing and treatment of COVID-19, why not the end of city designate some of them and whatever is necessary, technically and administrative-wise, should be made available? Well, this is what they should have done long before yes. now. Like, we see, like I keep saying, we always start off when the event is over. Mm. And that's the funny thing with governance in Nigeria. We are always at the back, you know, when things are over. So what you're saying or what everybody's saying right now is that the government should wake up from its sleep. The government should involve more people, involve more professionals in this, so that we can, you know, come out of this as soon as possible. There is no point for us to keep, you know, going back and forth, like I keep saying, going back, going forth. Do we do this? Don't we? No. But this is a time for strategic planning and execution. Right. Mr. Palumi, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Now, prior to this agreement by the governor's forum calling for interstate lockdown, many states had earlier announced the closure of their boundaries just to check the spread of the coronavirus. Now, despite such closures, however, many Nigerians still travel to and fro such states. Now, what does this indicate? Is it indicative of, of a weakness of implementation or what exactly? Yeah, you see, um, what we, the experience we've had recently 
has simply shown that, um, has shown the level of the good organization in government and um, the level of our government's ability to organize itself to achieve the essential cause of government. Do not forget that what the government is doing today falls simply within the uh, primary principle and objective of government to protect lives and property, to protect the people, and to ensure that there's good governance in the land. Now, what we are the experience we are having now today has gone to show that uh, all of this why we've had people who have figureheads who don't have their neck well screwed on their shoulder in taking up um, the business of governance. So I believe strongly that the disorganization is simply because there hasn't been a roadmap to fight the sport quickly. And it is essential that we give a clear on call to the federal government to design a policy plan. There should be an action plan towards, it is not about waking up in the morning, addressing the press, having some group of tax force in Abuja sitting and addressing press conference just to give a information as to number of people who have tested positive, number of people who have been tested and all of that. There's a need for us to have an aggressive plan towards addressing this pandemic. Because if we are not careful, this pandemic will do a very terrible dis destruction and disaster to the nation. You will, you, you, will, you will recall, like two days ago, that the effect of the pandemic has actually affected our 2020 budget because the Nigerian government can no longer fund the 2020 budget. And as a matter of fact, the Minister of Finance is already proposing a 50% cut to the budget. The Nigerian government, just like a native doctor, proposed that um, uh, 53, uh, 57 dollar per barrel for our oil for the 2020 budget, and eventually we can't even afford 20 dollar per barrel. So this is an unfortunate situation we find ourselves. So there's a need for us to have an organized plan towards addressing all of those problems. You know, recently some of the states just come out, make declarations. Some of them dance to the gallery just to let the people know they are doing something. But this is not the time for politics. This is the time for governance. This is the time to show to the people that they are determined and they have capacity to represent them and to you know, advance their collective welfare. Our legal practitioner, Kwelumi Olajek Bensi, thank you very much for joining us on Plus Politics and for your contribution. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Now, a great idea being proposed by the Governor's Forum. I'm concerned about how they can implement this now nationwide. What are the measures, what, should, what machinery should be put in place to see for the full implementation of this interstate uh, boundary borders lockdown? I think, I think the first thing the federal government needs to do is to um, go to the National Assembly and get um, relevant uh, bills passed, you know, to support so whatever. It's an act of part should be an act of parliament. Yes, yeah. so that they get whatever whatever they want to do. They know that there is a law behind it. And after that, it's I, I think also that we need to decide who do we want to man these borders. Is it the uh, police? Is it the army? Or is it the civil defense? We need to decide because what you have right now is you just have. Different people on the road, you know, you don't even understand who is who. Yeah. And funny thing, you just find roads are blocked, there is no policeman, there is nobody. So the government needs to decide how they want to go about it because we all seem to be playing with this thing. But we should learn from what has happened in Italy, we should learn from what has happened in America, and we should also realize that Nigeria does not have half one quarter of the kind of medical facilities these two countries have. And you know the devastation that has happened there. So we must know that if this thing gets out of hand, it will not spare anyone. Now, let's look at the, the social economic and even possibility, the, the security implications of this interstate um, border lockdown. What, what could possibly um, emanate from this? Well, what could emanate is that, as usual, people would want to revolt which is normal because nobody wants to be locked down for a long time. We've been at home for about going to three, going to a month now, and people have been crying of, you know, no food, no money. No, and then you're locking them another two weeks. It means that, first of all, the first thing the government needs to think about is, we're asking Nigerians to stay at home. How do they survive? If the means of survival is made available to Nigerians, trust me, people will stay at home. But I also would say this, that, you know, in as much as we're all screaming, no money, no food, and all of that, but when people wake up and start seeing people dropping dead, people will be forced to stay indoors. Mr. Francis Chileke, thank you for your contribution on this segment, and thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, the Nigerian Labour Congress speaks its mind on the lockdown order. This is up next for discussion. Stay with us.